Hello, I'm a Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Before I start this review, let me tell you a little story about a guy named Mako. And why you don't want to mess with him. Mako apparently was a very popular sort of underground voice celebrity. He did voices for Avatar The Last Airbender, which I never heard of, Samurai Jack, which I never saw, and played Akira the Wizard in Conan, which I barely remember. So as you can tell, I barely know who this guy is. But apparently a lot of you do, and we're not very happy when I made fun of his voice in the TMNT movie. I remember it like it was yesterday. Okay, maybe I don't remember it like it was yesterday, but I have a clip! His home has become like an empty shell. Each of your brothers has Oh god, what did they do to Splinter's voice? It sounds like Mr. Miyagi if he smoked a million Marlboros. <laughs> Marlboros. Well, apparently a lot of you took this the wrong way thinking that I was making fun of the actor himself, sending me emails like, You don't mess with Mako, motherfucker. Leave Mako alone, he is the man. And, you should crucify your privates for making fun of Mako. Well, there goes a one-year anniversary surprise. The fact is, I don't hate Mako, I don't know Mako, I know nothing about Mako. I just thought the voice was a little different compared to the other splinters I've heard before. I mean, sheesh, you act like the guy died or something. God damn it! Okay, okay, so just to recap, I don't hate Mako, I don't know Mako, so logically I can't hate someone I don't know. Especially when he's dead, that makes him very difficult. So, no disrespect, I apologize, let's move on. Boy, how the hell am I gonna segue out of that? Oh, wait a minute. Mako was in Conan. Conan starred Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger was in a horrible Conan ripoff, which was known as Red Sonja! Just when he thought barbarian role-playing was restricted to the bedroom, Red Sonja dares to show us that half-naked people in loincloths is not only fashionable, but highly cost-effective. A shame it doesn't have a well-developed story to go along with it. This is another one of those classic bad movies that everyone seems to talk about. But why? Is it really so bad that it even deserves mentioning? Well, grab a potion of pretentiousness and let's find out! So it starts out with a young Sonya being played by Bridget Nielsen, as we see her lying unconscious with her house on fire. But then she wakes up to find a mystical... unfinished special effect, who tells her about her woes. Sonya! You are suffering, Sonya. Fairy Godmother? But vengeance shall be yours. Whoa! A fairy godmother who kicks ass! Vengeance on Queen Gedrin, who wanted you for herself. Your disgust was clear. And so it was that Gedrin ordered your family murdered, your body violated by her soldiers. Am I the only one that finds it weird that a woman is explaining what happened to the person that it just happened to? I mean, she just went through all this. Why does she have to be reminded? Queen Gedrin wanted you for herself. Yeah, I know. This all happened like a minute ago. Your disgust was clear. Yeah, uh, I know all of this. Gedrin ordered your family murdered. Still kind of a painful memory, really. Your body violated by her soldiers. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. But in your quest for justice and vengeance, you will need great strength. Well, I'm certainly not gonna get it from this pep talk! So, I'm not kidding. The mystical fairy waves her magic wand so that Sonya can possess a great amount of strength. And maybe, just maybe, turn into a real boy. So if you're like me, you're probably wondering, who the hell was this spirit? Where did she come from? Why did she want to help Sonya out so bad? Like most bad movies, they decide not to tell us. So really, you could put anything there and it would make just about as much sense. You could put Ronald McDonald in that position and be just as logically satisfying. Try once more, just for me. And me? Bubble me. So we cut to years in the future as we see the ancient order of silly hats is planning to do away with an evil power that mankind cannot control. Where is the Lord of Lucania? He has not come, Highness. He should be here for the destruction of the talisman. But we cannot delay. We will proceed without him. And take those ridiculous things off! So we see the priestesses as they plan to get rid of the evil talisman which seems to be shaped like a radioactive booger. But Castle Anthrax is under attack as the evil Queen Getrin surrounds the castle with her soldiers. O oh God of Gods! It has become too powerful for us. 
And we must destroy it before it destroys the world. I'm sure absolutely nothing will stop this ceremony. So let me just proceed as slowly as possible, showing how confident I am that we are about to destroy this evil power. In fact, I feel like it's gone already. Remember that evil power? That was so long ago. Shit takes! So the soldiers enter the castle, killing off all the priestesses, protecting the glowing sour skill. But Getrin wants to be sure she has the right mystical power of doom. So she tests it out. Touch it. My god! A jump cuts people out of existence! Touch it. No! Touch it. <laughs> so it is true. Only women may touch it. Take it out. You know, I'm very uncomfortable with these choices of words. Only women may touch it, take it out, she wants her for herself. If I just heard the audio to this, I'd swear I was listening to a medieval porno. By the way, does this guy in the picket fence hat look familiar to you? That's right, it's the Gestapo guy from Raiders of the Lost Ark. And yes, he always has that face. I'm beginning to think he was just born with it. Sliminess like that can't be created. So anyway, one of the women runs away as the soldiers chase her down, but she's suddenly approached by, guess who? Put that cookie down! But unfortunately, the soldiers shoot the woman in the back as Arnold catches her. Okay, you can tone down the music, guys. He's just carrying her. It's not very exciting. Oh, well, you can bring the music back now! It's a fight scene! Hello? I... Never mind. Let's just see what she has to say. Must destroy the talisman. We must find my sister. Take me. I know where she is. Please. Sorry, I totally blanked. What was that? So Arnold is told to find Red Sonia, who lives in the training grounds of... What the hell is that? You have nothing more to learn, Red Sonia. I didn't know Ewoks had geishas. I shall be your Gandalf for the evening. You must learn to like men a little better. <laughs> Come on, how can she take him seriously without snickering? But in life, all is not swordplay. Yeah. Hatred of men in a lovely young woman. Okay. It could be your downfall. <laughs> Alright, keep going. That would have been music to my ears 30 years ago. Sorry, sorry, keep going. Look at his wingspan. He's making Queen Amidala's clothes look subtle. I know. So Master Overkill tells Sonia that she can take one weapon as a gift for being such a good student. And it turns out one sword seems to be calling her name. Literally. Singing Sword is the ancient mythology of Bugs Bunny cartoons. So Arnold approaches the training grounds through the mystical god taking a dump as he informs Red Sonia that her sister is dying and that she only has moments to speak to her. You must destroy the talisman, Sonia. Send it into darkness. Swear that you will. I swear. Dead. Thank you, Captain Obvious. If I get hit by an arrow, you'll be sure to tell me, right? So Sonya decides to set out and destroy the evil talisman, which apparently is very easy to locate. Someone is using the talisman. No, I think Wily e. Coyote's storm machine just backfired again. Arnold tries to come along with Sonya, but she declares that she needs no man to help her out. It's no business of yours. And neither am I. You may be wrong on both counts. I know you're a brave girl, but danger is my trade. Then I'll learn it by myself. Oh, God! Watching these people try to act is like trying to watch a mute person trying to teach another mute person how to talk. We then come across a young prince who you may also recognize from another movie. 
I refuse to surrender. One, two, dudes! That's right, it's the Star of Surf Ninjas! Wow, I'm really amazed at how unamazing these cameos are. Quickly, come! Come to me! Too slippery! Do you want me to fall in that boiling mud? Don't worry, just take the advice that you gave in your other movie. Remember, bend your knees, use your arms! So it turns out the prince is a spoiled brat of a destroyed kingdom, who's always followed by his helper named Falcon. What's the prince's name, you may ask? His Royal Highness, the Prince Tarn. Prince Tarn? That's not very PC, is it? Sonia questions the prince to find out who destroyed his kingdom. What happened? What happened? Queen Gedron attacked us. What happened? Gedron? Queen Gedron? I'm acting! So she continues on her quest as the prince decides to tag along. She comes across a group of warriors who get pretty upset when their leader doesn't let her pass and she stabs him in the chest. That's usually not a good icebreaker. But Arnold is there to help her out. Get away! Get away! Go! What about you? I can hold them! Ah! Help me! I cannot hold them! Meanwhile, we cut to the evil fortress of Queen Getrin, where we see her get ready to set up the talisman and use its awesome power for the forces of evil. Like... candles? Much? Enemies are approaching the Outer Empire! Okay... Uh-huh... Walking... Still walking... Entering a room rented out from Castle Grayskull... Wow! I'm so glad they showed us the long walk to the throne! Otherwise, they never would've figured out how the hell she got there! I just assumed it was magic! So she calls upon her sorcerer, who I swear is Wizzo from the Bozo Show, who asks him to show her the enemies that are coming her way. <sighs> Boy, I've never seen a poorer excuse to have nudity in a film outside of a porno! I mean... What the hell was that? Were they really so desperate for a titty shot that they had to just throw it randomly into the middle of the movie? Are there just no adult theaters in this fantasy world? <gasps> that girl. Shall I send out a small ambush party? No. We'll wait till they get a little closer. It makes me seem stupider that way. So Sonia finally gets to the boundaries of the evil world. Wow, subtle. It's like home and gardens outside of Mordor. Burkabane, the land of perpetual night. Falcon, proclaim my arrival. Oh, keep quiet. Come on, that Prince of Tards is a better actor than you, and he's only like five. So they cross the bones of a giant decomposing rhino. Whatever. As Sonya tries to teach the young prince some lesson in manners. I was disarmed by those ruffians the other day. I noticed. So? It needn't be fatal. I am disarmed. Kill me. Come on. Please do! Simple, isn't it? But it's not in the rule book. You see, fencing and fighting are two different things. As well as acting and looking pretty. After the prince finally asks nicely, Sonia agrees to teach him in the art of self-defense. You were disarmed because you hold the hill too tight. Grip gently. See? Gently. I see. Like this? Your Highness learns fast. So they move on to the next level, the I mean location, where they discover a monster that's lurking in the water. Oh, God, is that fake? Come on, I've seen better effects from the octopus in the Popeye movie. As Hope looks bleak against this mechanical sock puppet, we get a visit from an old familiar face. Hello! I'm still in this movie! So Arnold jumps into the water and tries to save the day. Okay, I think we spent way too much time watching Arnold ride this thing. I don't even think he's really fighting it. I think he's just enjoying the ride. I can't kill you! 
deal is it? This machine. Oh yeah, because they always have robotic mechanical machines in barbaric times. Where'd they get that thing made? The old Radio Shack? Sonia, we have to blind it. It's our only chance. Yes, because as we all know, robots see out of their eyes. What sense does that make? Does it also scream like a banshee if you nail it in the mechanical groin? I mean, why build it that way? <laughs> so they escape the monster and continue on their quest. But Arnold's sword is extending for Sonia as we partake in a love scene which I like to call Love in the Dueling Accents. No man may have me unless he has beaten me in a fair fight. So, the only man that can have you is one who has tried to kill you. That's logic. Hey, Arnold's pointing out the plot holes. Don't be a fool. I don't want to kill you. Besides, my heart will always belong to Flava Flav. So they fight, I guess, as most couples do, as the little prince observes the commotion. What the hell did I miss? I will eat you, child! Tonight I die in Chinese! Yeah, apparently Arnold is so strong he needs a string to hold the child up. Either that or he's just been a puppet the whole time. Either one wouldn't surprise me. Man, even the kids' choreography is better than those two. They should've made the movie about that pit squeak. So they both tire out, lay next to a tree, and... Get Trent's army. What? What happened? Did they just give up? Who won? Did they make whoopee afterwards? Are they a couple now? Do they still hate each other? Okay, screw it. So they get to the evil fortress where apparently the evil talisman is held. It's only a model. They quickly have to decide who will stand guard outside in case any of them are spotted. Who stand guard this doorway? The post of danger. Falcon? Me? Here? I don't know what's coming out that door. No, no, I'm going up. I'll take my chances in there. And I have to go in. It's you yet, Dark! Get a fucking head! I'll stay. Oh, would you? By the way, is it me, or does that giant circular door look vaguely familiar? Inside, the Queen and her evil lackey discuss why and how they seem to have suddenly lost control of the talisman. Oh, God, Majesty, what you want? The world, I call! Today we took another piece of it, the city of Tacto! There will be no world. There will be no world. There will be no world. <laughs> there will be no world. I just got it. So our heroes are sneaking around trying to find a way in when suddenly... <laughs> oh, hey! Someone just slid down the trap door from the outside and into the dining room. Why do we install that again? So our heroes fight off the soldiers as we see our young prince duke it out with Gestapo Swine. Look out! He's gonna be crushed by the Looney Tunes logo! So Sonia finally reaches the queen as... So the prince and Sonia meet up with the queen as Sonia tells the prince to run for cover. Prince, get Calidor and Falcon. Aha! There's a way behind the throne. Oh, wait, don't do that. Make him come back. I don't want to actually have to chase him. You slaughtered my parents, like cattle. My brother, my sister. My uncle, my grandpa, my goldfish, my chia pet, my goddamn chia pet. But it turns out the queen has magic on her side. Or an extra 50. Now I can jump out wherever I want. <laughs> okay, seriously, knock it off. It's not a good effect. Jeez, this woman teleports more than Ganon from The Legend of Zelda. But it turns out the wizard is also getting his strengths. 
Uh oh, she spotted me. I guess I should stab her again. I guess I should stab her again. I guess I should stab her again. I guess I should stab her. Okay, what is with these morons? Do you have short term memory loss? Now I'll never lead the Grand March. So they enter into the candle room where they have their big final battle. Huh, how strangely anticlimactic. Goodbye! Take your jawbreaker with you! So our heroes have to escape the fortress before it all comes crumbling down. I can't get through! Damn my large heaving breasts! I especially love this scene where Arnold holds up the falling rubble so that they can pass. But look after it falls. You can hopscotch over that! Quick! Run away from... nothing! So the queen is destroyed, the prince is still a brat, and our two actors can't act, and they all live happily ever after. So, was this film really as bad as some people make it out to be? Reportedly, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to joke that he would torture people by showing this movie over and over and over. So, is it really that bad? Well, it's definitely bad, but certainly not the worst. In my opinion, Arnold has certainly made much worse films, so I don't really get why this one's so special. But I can't lie, it is definitely a bad movie. And when your actress playing the main character who looks like this is married to someone who looks like this, yeah, you're gonna be in deep fucking trouble. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember, so you don't have to.